So welcome to the candidate forum for the New South Wales State Election of Heffron. The State Electorate of Heffron, rather. Hosted by the Alexandria Residents Action Group in collaboration with Friends of Erskineville and Red Watch. My name is Vanessa Knight. I'm the co-convener of the Alexandria Residents Action Group and I'll be comparing tonight's forum with Darren Jenkins, the president of the Friends of Erskineville. I'd also like to welcome Jeff Turnbull from Red Watch, who has been a big contributor to this event. He's up the back. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we meet on the traditional lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present. So people, <coughs> the New South Wales state election will be held on the 28th of March, which is just 17 short days away. The Liberal Government of Barry O'Farrell and then Premier Mike Baird have held offices since 2011. Following electoral boundary redistributions last year, the seat of Heffron takes in Redfern in the north, Kensington to the east, the airport to the south and Sydenham to the west. It's a very large and diverse area. Tonight we have two of the three candidates for the seat of Heffron. On my left, I have Ron Honig, who's the current member for Heffron. Ron is a barrister who served as mayor of the city of Botany for over 31 years, which I understand is a bit of a record, before standing down and winning the seat of Heffron by election in state parliament for the Australian Labor Party in 2012. Ron is also the shadow minister for emergency services and the shadow minister for heritage in the New South Wales parliament. On my right, I have Osman Faruqi, the Greens candidate. Osman has been an Alexandria resident for over 20 years and has completed his high school and university education in the electorate. He started in politics early, having been a member of the Greens since he was 15 and has been the president of the Union of New South Wales Student Representative Council for two years and has also served as the New South Wales president of the National Union of Students. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, John Kutsukas, the Liberal Party candidate, is unable to join us. Despite our best efforts, we were unable to secure a representative from the Liberal Party. I will tell you that we asked him to answer the three questions and that we would provide those to you, to the residents. We also asked if he could send us a replacement for the evening. And we also suggested Christine Forster, who's a councillor on the City of Sydney, uh, who is across most of the issues that we're talking about tonight, to see if she would might be a suitable replacement. But unfortunately, we have no one from the Liberal Party tonight, which is a great disappointment because I was hoping to be able to present all three views to you, the residents. So, can you please make Ron Honig and Osman Faruqi welcome? My name is Darren Jenkins, I'm the President of the Friends of Erskineville. It's great to see so many people turning up tonight for the Candidates Forum. Uh, I too would like to acknowledge that we meet on the traditional lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Um, the format of tonight is quite a simple one. It's a very, very much in the style of a town hall meeting. Each of the candidates will be given 10 minutes each to start. They'll be requested to answer the three questions that were put and which have been circulated amongst the community. Those questions were, one, what is your party's position in relation to WestConnex and where does public transport fit in your party's policies as, as it affects the seat of Heffron? Two, what principles do you think are essential to the planning process and will you sign the community charter for better planning? And three, do you support the sale of Australian Technology Park? How will you guarantee the protection of its unique heritage, preservation of the existing open space, and maintain the vision of fostering innovation and technology? Candidates, as I said, will be given 10 minutes. Uh, they will get a warning bell at nine and then they'll be really pushing their luck if they get to 10. Um, as a result of a coin toss, uh, Ron Honig will speak first, uh, then Osman Faruqi will follow. Uh, there will be a time, there will be time after both of the candidates have spoken for question and answer, 
and then at the end of the night there will be an opportunity for the candidates to sum up. So without anything further, please what make Ron Honig feel welcome. Thank you. I recognise the traditional owners of this land and pay my respects to the elders past and present and I recognise my parliamentary colleague, the Honourable Marine Faruqi, who is also in the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, this election is not just about candidates. It is a contest between Mike Baird and the Liberals who believe that profit-driven private sector is the solution to every public service and every public sector construction or infrastructure investment and labour who believes that New South Wales is, is a homeland where no person should be left behind, to quote Barack Obama. It's a contest between Mike Baird, who believes that we're all economic units, and Labor, who believes that everybody should get a fair go in this society and that New South Wales is a homeland. When Labor rails against cuts to education, it rails against cuts to education not because it's a political issue, it's because we fundamentally believe that education is one of the most significant issues that ensures people don't get left behind and gives opportunities to everybody. When Labor rails against the sacking of 1,100 TAFE teachers and the tripling of fees, we, we, we do because we fundamentally believe that TAFE is essential to give everybody opportunities, not just vocational training for those young people in their trade, but to those who miss out on, on obtaining H, uh, HSC results and need another opportunity in their life, or those who have lost their jobs in, in, in their own industry and need to be retained. When Labor rails against $3 billion cu cuts to the health system, it does so because the doctors and the nurses are actually telling us that they can't provide all of us with the quality health care and the ambulance officers tell us that they cannot uh, they cannot discharge their patients in a hospital to get to those people in need. There are substantial reasons why, why Labor takes its philosophical position and I can say that this election is just so significant. Another four years of Mike Baird and his Liberals and you will not recognise New South Wales and when the political cycle changes, you will not be able to undo the damage that, that their ideology will have on, on New South Wales. The key to the future of New South Wales is actually planning and planning law. Getting right the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act and getting right the planning policies of government. The Liberals introduced a green paper and a white paper that I actually talked to you about some, um, some months ago now, a year ago now, and I set forward Labor, Labor's position when I led for the Labor Party in, in the Legislative Assembly where the bill was introduced. Planning is the key. Sydney currently is in crisis. It is in crisis because there is a developer-driven demand that is allowing uncontrolled increases in population densities and uncontrolled development of, of a variety of industries. We need an environmental planning and assessment act that provides for sustainable, ecologically sustainable development, provides for certainty and provides for transparency in the process. To, to enable that to occur, uh, should we be successful on the 28th of March, then I will have a hand in writing that bill to ensure that, I, that, that gets restored the commission of inquiries that were abolished following my success at uh, the commission of inquiry in relation to the expansion of Port Botany provide again for proper regional plans and sub-regional plans that will integrate integrate all of Sydney's activities, including, including necessary government <coughs> infrastructure, 
to ensure that Sydney grows not only in a sustainable way, but in a way in which infrastructure is able to be coordinated with development. Now this particular area of Sydney is really a, a microcosm of the crisis Sydney faces. The City Council is anticipating another 50,000 people to go into the Green Square area, another 6,000 people to go into Ashmore, the Ashmore Estate. It is mind-boggling that you could increase that level of population density in this area. Because in this area, in my electorate now, the schools are full, the hospitals are full, the water and sewerage system is not coping. There are, there are 50,000 people on the waiting list to get into public housing. People cannot get onto the buses for, for public transport purposes and they cannot get onto, on, onto trains. Anybody trying to get onto a train at Erskineville Station for the two services between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, it is impossible actually even to, to, to access the train system. So Labor will enact uh, an Environmental Planning and Assessment Act with the, with the intellectual ability to be able to plan. And I just want to say this to you, why planning is so important, is one building is going to be there for these 50 or 100 years. We can't wait any longer in terms of enacting proper legislation and we need to have the electoral ability to be able to write the planning rules. The charter to which you refer to in the question, I signed that already last year. The, the principles are, are principles that, that are sensible that should be adopted, but the key is the legislation. As far as your question in relation to the West Connex is concerned, I have been railing against the West Connex since the Liberals first announced it two and a half years ago. It is an unfunded, unplanned, undesigned line on a map that, that uh, in my view, is no more than a political tool to get it through an election to give the impression that they are doing something. For two and a half years, I have been attacking the Liberals in relation to that particular, that particular policy. The Labor Party recently, through its shadow cabinet, has adopted my view. If Labor is elected, there will not be a West Connex or whatever other brand that the Liberals propose to, pr propose to construct. I'll say that again. If Labor is elected, there will be no West Connex or 33 kilometre tunnel or any other way, or any, other, any, any other way you wish to describe that road. In relation to the Australian Technology Park that is located just to the just to the left of just to the left of me, those buildings date back to 1879 from memory. They were they are an essential part, much of it, of Australia's heritage that should be maintained. A heritage conservation study has been undertaken. On, on a number of occasions and there are items of m m machinery located within that area that is of huge uh, um, heritage significance. That, th those Everly workshops house the largest uh, construction of, of steam engines in the southern hemisphere. It is an essential part of our heritage I would like to see it as a museum and I would like to see it as an essential part of a place where overseas visitors could visit. I know the City Council itself um, uh, has only made submissions in respect of the expression of interest for, for its sale, but I don't trust the Baird government. The Baird government is selling off everything that moves, it's selling off our ports, it wants to sell off our electricity network, and it does so in an effort to obtain the best yields just like it removed the cap from Port Botany to get the, to, to get the most yield, it will sell that side off to get the most yield. And, and this area, I can tell you, cannot house any more population density on, a, on an unplanned basis. Um, I know that perhaps some parts of that development haven't been su as successful as uh, others would have liked for technology startups. But, but that is a different administrative question. It's not a question as to whether or what should happen with that site. 
It has been since about since the 1870s in public ownership and it should remain in public ownership and, that, and that's my position. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, our next speaker, the next candidate to speak to us will be Osman Faruqi. Please make Osman feel welcome. traditional owners of the land, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay respect to their elders, past and present. Thank you all for coming, and a special thanks to Friends of Erskineville, the Alexandria Residence Action Group, and Redwatch for putting on tonight's forum, and also putting together a set of questions that I think really address the crucial issues, not just for Efron, but also for the statewide election campaign coming up in 17 days. Now, I thought just before I address those issues that have been put to the candidates, I'd talk a little bit, just briefly, about myself and my story, my connection with the electorate. I moved here with my parents just over 20 years ago. It was a little, you know, a little toddler. Um, we arrived like a lot of migrants do, just with ourselves and a couple of suitcases. We settled like a lot of migrants do in the electorate in Kingsford. Since then, I've lived around the electorate, Kingsford, Kensington, Erskineville. For the past eight years, I've lived around the corner from Green Square in Alexandria. I currently work as a policy advisor. Just before that, I was a community worker working at the Youth Action and Policy Association, which is the peak representative body for young people across New South Wales, fighting for issues like housing affordability and youth homelessness. Um, I consider it a privilege to stand as a Greens candidate for the area, and over the last few months, I have found it a privilege to work alongside the community campaigning for the issues that we're going to be talking about tonight, like West Connects, ATP, and planning. Now on to the issues. On the surface, those three issues, West Connects, the potential sell-off of the Australian Technology Park, and broader planning issues might only be connected tangentially, but I think there's a lot more in common to them. They are all driven by ideology, not common sense policy making, and all three of those issues are about delivering for the big end of town, corporate developers, and big infrastructure companies, not for the wider community. The Greens are absolutely 100% rock solid opposed to building the West Connects in any form. That has been a consistent position that we have had since day one, and it's a position that I'm proud to hold as the candidate for Heffron. The West Connects is a 1950s solution to Sydney's current traffic problems. The current plan before us, the Liberal government has put before us, to dump 130,000 extra cars onto local roads won't solve congestion in Sydney. What it will do is shift pinch points closer to the electorate of Heffron. Just last week, Infrastructure Australia confirmed that the business case for the West Connects did not include the impacts for induced traffic. That is traffic that would be created as a result of the creation of the motorway. We've seen City of Sydney demolish the traffic analysis in the business case. We've had the New South Wales Auditor General deliver an independent report pointing out huge amounts of irregularities and saying that it is riddled with biases and false assumptions. Now, unfortunately, Labor had an opportunity in response to the community campaign that's been going on for months. And I, I found it a real privilege to stand alongside residents the King Street Crawl, outside the Edmore Theatre, more recently, in opposing the Western Exxon. That community campaign is growing, and Labor had the chance in New South Wales, like they did in Victoria with the East West Link, in coming out in opposition to the motorway and standing up with what residents, not just in the inner West Sydney, but across New South Wales want, but they squipped it. I think I have to disagree with my Labor opponent when he says Labor is not going to build the West Connects. The announcement from Labor is to extend and build Stage 1 and Stage 2 of the West Connects. Stage 2 of the West Connects, under Labor's plan, will have an even bigger impact on the electorate of Heffron than the current Liberal plan. It's an extension of that tunnel, maybe it's a tunnel, maybe it's a road that hasn't been made clear, all the way through to Port Botany. Apparently, the St. Peter's interchange won't be built, but what we have to know from the Labor Party in this electorate is where will the interchange be built? How many houses will be acquired? Where will the exit ramps be? Where will the entrances be? Where will the smokestacks go? These are the issues that residents are approaching me in terms of their concerns about the Liberal version of the West Connects and also the Labor Party version of the West Connects. The Greens, thank you. The Greens have released a fully costed $4.5 billion transport policy that diverts funding away from the failed idea of more toll roads, more, water, more motorways into solutions that will get Sydney moving public transport and cycleways. In the city of Heffron, we've committed to building the City of Sydney plan for a Zetland to CBD light rail line that will connect high density areas like Green Square, Waterloo, Alexandria and Zetland to the CBD. We've also committed $250 million to the inner city regional bike network to make it easier and safer for commuters who want to use bicycles to get to school, work or university. 
We've also committed to buying back the airport line and reducing the station access fee to make it easier for people to get to the airport using public transport. That means less congestion in our electric around the airport and also less congestion on, uh, on our reading street. I mentioned the rapidly growing Green Square area. As I mentioned earlier, I live very close to Green Square. The residents that I've spoken to, some of them have lived there for years, some of them have recently moved in, have had the same issues that they've been raising with me. Over decades, and in particular in the last years of the Labor government and in the recent years of the Liberal government, we've seen massive increases in housing density, but we haven't seen the commensurate investment in infrastructure. What people want is investment in public transport so they don't have to you know, be half an hour late to work because the buses and trains are full and they miss them. They want investment in childcare, they want investment in schools, they want investment in health services. Residents that I speak to can't get access to bulk billing GPs because they're not taking more appointments. They just can't handle the influx of new residents in the area. And we have seen a woeful failure to plan under both Labor and the Liberal Party. The Heffron Electra has suffered from poor planning for over two decades. Green Square and also the Ashmore Estate, where if we remember, it was actually under Christina Keneally, the planning minister then premier, Ashmore was approved for a 19-storey development. Uh, both Green Square and Ashmore are examples of planning failure in Heffron. The Heffron electorate, uh, traffic, traffic chaos in the Heffron electorate is mounting and basic community needs are not being met. Neither Labor nor the Liberal Party did anything to start construction of a new high school in the electorate, and it's only now on the eve of the election. We're seeing that talked about. And in the case of the Liberal Party, it's putting a shotgun to a head and saying you'll only get a high school if you support or if we manage to pass the sell-off of our polls and wise. That's an outrageous threat to the residents in the inner city who've been fighting for and campaigning for a high school for years. And I think it's also really disappointing that the Liberals could not send anyone to front up the local community when their policies on West Connects, their policies on privatisation and their policies on planning are of huge concern and have had a huge detrimental impact to residents in the area. I'm proud that the Greens have signed the Better Planning Network uh, statement, the Community Charter, and I've signed it as well. And I'm very proud of the Greens' track record on development issues, from exposing dodgy deals done linked to developer donations, to fighting alongside residents against overdevelopment. The proposed privatisation and sell-off of the Australian Technology Park is another classic <coughs> example of liberal ideology trumping common sense, pol common sense policy and the interests of the wider community. In addition to the important rail heritage at the site, it's an important hub for clean energy startups. Startmate, which is the most successful startup incubator in Australia, and I think even in the Southern Hemisphere, is based out of the ATP. It's funded incredibly important groundbreaking research just around the corner from our electric in solar thermal energy, as well as in hydrogen fuel storage and hydrogen fuel cells as well. That's groundbreaking stuff happening around the corner. The Liberal plan is to kick those startups out, to sell it off to developers without a plan for how to deal with the traffic issues, how to deal with um, jobs in the area, how to deal with the increased congestion that residents would face as well. This Sunday, the Greens are actually hosting a forum on the ATP at the Alexandria Hotel. Uh, uh, we have uh, Lucy Taxa from Macquarie University, Richard Butcher, who's a rail historian, and Peter Ty from the Electrical Trade Union. Also a representative from Redwatch, Jeff Turnbull. Jeff wanted me to point out that Redwatch isn't supporting any candidates, but they are working with community groups to build the campaign against the sell-off of the ATP. So the Greens are committed to the sell-off, not just in the lead-up to this election, but we will continue campaigning with people on the ground as well to ensure that the Australian Technology Park is not sold off and it remains a vital institution, not just to protect our heritage, but also to ensure that we've got jobs for people in the community, jobs in the areas that are growing, like clean energy. The other couple of issues I wanted to raise quickly that were the questions sort of asked by uh, the moderators were the two things. One is on the environment and the other on education. The environment is a really, really important issue for me. The Greens are the only party that are absolutely fully committed to banning coal seam gas mining across the country. We're the only party with a plan to transition away from coal mining and from dirty fossil fuel technology to 100% clean and renewable future, to lower power prices and to create jobs. We also are committed to winding back and reinstating the ban on hunting in national parks and restoring protection for our marine sanctuaries. The last issue is education. Public education, I believe, is the most important responsibility of state government. And what we've seen, particularly in the area of TAFE, for the past five to ten years, has been devastating. TAFE was, and still has the potential to be, a world-class education institution. It, as my Labor opponent mentioned, it not only is an opportunity for people to get important skills and trades and vocations, but
but it's an opportunity for second chances as well. We're looking for alternative <coughs> entries into university or further education. What we saw in 2010 was an agreement by the federal Labor government and the state Labor government to cut funding from TAFE and to say the only way funding could be increased to New South Wales would be if that money went to private providers. That's called contestability. Currently, state and federal governments across Australia are delivering $1.6 billion a year to fatten the profits of private education companies while TAFE staff are losing their jobs by the thousands, courses are being cut, and students are paying triple, quadruple fees. That is not a way to build for the future. That is not a way to build a strong economy, and it's not a way to treat an important institution like TAFE. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm looking forward to your questions.